Hello and welcome to the wisdomfactory.net. I'm Heidi and I'm in Italy and I'm holding these interviews and lately since a year about Africa because I was there in Johannesburg at the Integral Conference a year, more than a year ago and I got to know so wonderful people and I got so much interested in in this continent which up to then it was sort of far away and I never really had a connection with and since then I have interviewed a lot of beautiful people and today I have another beautiful person Karin here Karin your name is Muse Minali is it right yeah, yeah Muse Minali Karin <laughs> yeah it's a thank different you. accent yeah thank you, thank you and uh, yeah and I'm very glad to talk with you because it's a topic which I'm very interested in women mm -hmm. empowerment As you see, there is a bit of an age difference between me and you. And when I grew up, yeah, women could do some things, but we were not yet really encouraged to, 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 to step up and really do what we wanted to do. And we were not empowered in many ways. Yes, we could fit into the masculine uh, society and try to compete with men, but it's not really empowerment of the feminine. And so I'm really interested what you will be talking about, about women's empowerment, and especially in Africa. And in, in Rwanda, as I've understood, that is your country. And before we do that, I would invite you to talk about who you are, where you are, what your experience is, what your connection is with the topic, and why you want to bring it out into the world. So, um, uh, <laughs> my name is Karin Seminar, and um, I'm 20 years old. And um, right now, I'm a student. Um, I'm a student in southern New Hampshire, but we study through a Kepler program. So, I study still in Rwanda. And I am currently working uh, with a human rights um, local organization. It's called Youth Development for Human Rights Advancement. And I am a member of it, and I'm also. Um, part of the team that is in charge of uh, women, our women's program. So uh, uh, I'm part of the team that leads it. And I'm really very interested in women empowerment because like we have really been hearing a lot about women empowerment, how we can really go into the masculine world, do all these things, be technicians, be engineers, be leaders. But um, we really have seemed to like forget that We leave, our, we leave behind our femininity, we leave behind our women power, and we try to so much fit in in this world of, of male, of, of men. And we really, I really, I'm really interested in like bringing that awareness that we don't have to leave behind our identity. We can still be us and we can still be, we can still do everything we want to. Yeah. And this is wonderful because I think it's really so much needed. Our generation, my generation, uh, try to become better men, you know, do everything like <laughs> men do. And so what we did was to increase the masculine energy in the world. And we made it even worse. But that was the only thing we could do because we had no example. So now when you are so young, and it's wonderful that you are working already in this field, um, you have already our generation who tried to become again women and instead of being uh, men, uh, better men even. And so uh, I'm, I'm so happy that you don't need to become 60 to, to understand that we have to come back to our feminine uh, qualities and to, to do it right away. How is it? How, how did you grow up that you are so, you know, that's really unusual, you know, that you are not trying to fit into the paradigm and become some sort of man, but that you are going for the feminine uh, qualities and for the feminine ways of being in the world. So like you said, um, like these um, senior generations, like really, really try hard to be men, to be better men, like you said, and that's how we grew up. We grew up seeing these um seeing them as our role models seeing our mothers our grandmothers seeing them as our role models and we really grew up 
it's really a shame but most of women most of girls grow up as tomboys because of this i guess it's all the masculine energy that's really around and we really grow up wanting to fight with those boys in class showing them that really we are also really capable but i also started realizing this when i started in university how like you see i started seeing um because i grew up as a tomboy i started seeing now girls who really enjoy being girls who put on makeup i was like does makeup really exist and <laughs> that's really how we have grew up and i realized that you can really be us we can be all girly we can be really put on our makeup put on high heels and you can still go in court and we can still go in engineering can really do everything we want to do mm-hmm. uh, and so how was your childhood how, how how is your family so that you are so open uh, for for different things how, how where are you born how how is your family how is the 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 values uh, you grew up with apart from the masculine striving for masculine recognition you know <laughs> So um I I grew up in a family of five we are five siblings and we have our own, we have only our mother. I grew up seeing my mother my father died when I was a really young child and I guess I had six or eight years old and um I my mother is a businesswoman and it really was life was just there nothing too out of ordinary in africa like business is business we are middle age i mean middle income um family so pretty decent life um until the corona hit now business mm-hmm. have shut uh, yeah so yeah my childhood was really good with all the competing with boys um but yeah it was really nice yeah and then you you study now in the You said New, New Hampshire University, or what was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southern New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. So now, now, tell me a little bit about your ideas of women empowerment and how you also envision your future as a modern woman in a continent which is in many, many ways left out in the world. So how do you see your your future and what do you think that women can contribute when they get empowered enough? Sorry, I think you have to rephrase that. I can't really hear your voice with the internet. Pardon? I didn't get that. I think there is bad internet. I'm not really getting what you're saying. Ah, okay. I was saying that Africa is often left out in the world, you know, and uh, I wonder how you see your future in this continent, and also what do you think that the feminine, empowered women can contribute to create a better future, not only for your continent, for your country, for your continent, but for the whole world. What is the feminine possibility? So um, in Africa, it's like, it's really, as you said, as if we're already part of another world, but I guess it's not that much since there is now internet. It's as if the world is still one. It's really one because if something happens in Italy um, minutes after we know what happened so it's really like the internet has really brought a lot of things like for example for me I'm a student who study in a university that's in USA but I live in Rwanda that's the good thing of, of um, internet and that's also another example of how Africa is also joining in with the, like the whole movement of the world and i really see you you asked me about uh, empowerment and how it can um, change the world so i'm um, really with internet we have really tried to adopt this um western culture 
and it really somehow it worked but not as really so um i'm really um so passionate about like increasing this um women empowerment uh, like i said i also work with a human rights um organization and that has really really i have really realized that human rights is something that we are all that we also as women really need um to i to realize that it's there we can take advantage of it it's there to protect us it's there to keep us safe so we can really take care um take a use of it and i think women empowerment if it is really brought to um a higher standard i mean if it is brought to higher to to more people um everyone can now realize that do your job as a woman do your job as a man then we will meet in the middle the world will be a better place this will um improve my country not only my country but also um as a continent africa if we realize that i can be a woman i can give birth to children and i can also do business a man can also be do business and help me raise um my children so our children so um i really um think women empowerment is really that important and and powerful and impactful in our lives if um we realize that if you give but it doesn't mean that you can't do another thing and if you're married it doesn't mean that you have to sit around so yeah i think it can really help us the con- help the continent Afri- africa um raise its really <laughs> not only economy but also um help us improve i've also found out that women empowerment really helps with um with our mental health uh, like you said if you look good you know you'll do good mm-hmm. so that's really all like mental health yeah yes wonderful um i had a guest from kenya linda shuma oh. yeah and she said uh, 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 a word which struck me, but I had heard it before. She said, "Give a woman hundred, uh, give a man hundred, uh, or let's say thousand dollars, and he will uh, spend five hundred of them in the bar or somewhere. Give a woman thousand dollars, and she will spend everything to for to carry on with the family to, for to create a business for everything uh, like this." Is this what you understand too? Is this women empowerment to give them the resources to the woman to create a business, to 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 do something in the world, or how yeah. is? Yeah, tell me a little bit. Um, I will bring in uh, with my role uh, working with organization uh, with YDHR. A um, we have. Um, we have this program where we help um, women give them skills. We give them training that gives them skills and encourage them to go into these sectors that have been um, like so male dominated, for example, transport. You can't find a woman. It's like two women that drive um, buses, but they're also really capable. So we were we like this program really came up as um on the basis of that idea that a woman can use um different resources to like bring more um impact into the world into her family into our society into her community and uh, yeah we give them like different trainings we give them trainings on how to on handcraft tell them. You don't need to go to do all these high things, all those machines. You can still use your hands and you can still make money. You can still use your hands, use your head, and you can still bring like a big impact in your society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how do women respond? Are they Sorry? happy to, to, how do these women, uh, women generally, respond to this attempt to learn to teach them other skills new skills and to help them to create some business are they happy 
or do they want to keep the traditional role of just being mothers and in the family? Oops, that's a bit of a noise. Can you hear me? Okay, now you are back. That's fine. I was wondering how the women respond to your offers in the organization. Are they happy to come and learn? Yeah, yeah, women are really happy because in the selection, we were first, we first had like these campaigns um, telling women you can really do something, you can, you can really contribute to the society and um, women showed some interest and in our first cohort we like those women that really were really convinced and that were really um, interested came and they showed some good results because some of them have, have now their small business um the tailoring business they formed like a cooperative and they do their own like they have their own business where there is handcraft and there is tailoring because that's what we started with and like it's a cooperative but then as a business because they sell their their products and um i think after the their friends and uh their neighbors other people in the community saw this um change in them they were intrigued and more were interested um and they are really happy because they now realize there is also a world uh, beyond their homes. There is a world beyond raising children. Yes, they should raise their children, but also they have the capabilities of bringing an impact in their community. So they are really happy. Yeah. That's wonderful. And I'm wondering, I, as I have heard in Africa is still more the sense of family and community. So do women help each other or are they like men competition? How is it? How, what did you learn? <laughs> so in rural areas, from what we realized, observed, in rural areas, there is these women who are submissive and the men are like, the men, are, their husband are like, go here and go here but in the city that's a really different story there is this <laughs> competition in their homes and they're like your husband and wife there shouldn't be a competition but yeah in the city there is this competition but in rural areas there is no competition mm -hmm. okay so now the question how do you see your future or let's say differently what do you want to see in your country with your help in five years, in 10 years, or in 20 years? What do you see the progress? What do you wish that happens? Um, I, would, I like to think in five years, because I'm like 10 years, really, life is really unpredictable. Let's plan this short. So um, in five years, I really, because I'm graduating this next year, and I really want to take on um, this program and spreading it in different organizations because I realized that there are different, um, it's not, there are local organizations and that's really nice, local organizations that solve local challenges. And what I want to do in my future is to spread now this awareness, bring um, this women empowerment program in different organizations. And I really believe because they have people they're working with. So um, empowering them is really um, not that impossible. It's really actually simple. And I want to help them now realize there's this other aspect that can really bring impact in the community, in your communities. So that's how I see my future as a person who is spreading this awareness in more, um, uh, in more organizations. Mm -hmm. And on the practical basis, are you also going out to teach the women or is it on inside of the organization? Um, we have really, it hasn't even been a year when we started with this.
program in, in, in our organization. Mm-hmm. So I want to first see how it works, first see the result, see what can be changed before I bring it into um, my community, first of all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And do you sense that they would um, be happy that you come and tell them that the future can be different? Or do you see yes. resistance? No. <laughs> yeah. From the results I saw from this program, I'm really um, so sure that it will be um, successful in, in my community and in other communities as well. Go I'm spreading this, this mm-hmm. program. And I'm really be um, hopeful that it will work out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other question, when you have created businesses, the women work, how do they distribute? Because, you know, you have to ship the things, bring them from here to there. So <laughs> I'm seeing the danger that then men could take over and exploit the work of women as they did in the past several hundred years very often in the western world that the same could be happening also in africa so do you think also to take care for the distribution and for the marketing and so as a organization so you are asking how we take care of their products yeah so when they are still in training because we like train them and then after give them um, the skills and resources, we give them a small capital to those who need it, like buying those um, tailoring machines. We, we let, we like, it's like letting a bird fly free. So we give them their own independence and they that's how they form the cooperative, the working on their own. But when they're still in our trainings, we take care of the selling and the marketing of these products and then they share among them the the income. But as I said, this is a human rights um, organization. So when you couple human rights with in women empowerment, that's something big because yes, they can do something, but they also know that it's their right to be taken care of by their husband. So they know, like we teach them in our other, in our other human rights programs, that they shouldn't be taken like advantage or the, the husband shouldn't shouldn't be all sitting around and using their money to go and drink but they should really um sit down and talk and uh we also had once before this uh, uh, this before the outbreak we had this meeting where we invited um like these women we are working with and their partners to those who had them and it was really wonderful to see, like, to, to get the perspectives from their husband. How will they take, like, how do they understand what's their perception about their women working and the women, what they think. And it was really nice because we, we've got a middle ground where men understood that it's really good that these women are now going to be, distri- be contributing to the welfare of the family and women also understood that yes they are going to contribute but they are not the sole uh, um, people it's not their sole responsibility to, go to um, contribute to the contribute financially to the families mm-hmm. and how that's very interesting how did the men respond to the idea that they should also help to raise the children and not leave that to the women? Um, it was actually very, in, like, very interesting because men were like, we actually got to know that there are men who have like families who had like eight children and turns out that men don't know the names of their children. They know like the names of two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't even know their birthdays and it was entertaining to see how they reacted they were like I'm not going to change the type of, of my kids and getting that person to understand 
that <laughs> they are going to contribute. The woman is going to co- is going to change the diaper, but also has that responsibility of changing the, the diaper. It was hard work, but it was successful work. From the responses we got, I have to admit it's not all positive. Some haven't really changed, but you can say it's a success because a big number has showed some some really big um big um some big su- success from the stories these women tell us especially since um the outbreak and the lockdown now they were staying together the man didn't have an excuse i have work so yeah <laughs> women have reported some good news so the corona has something good too in your country too yeah yeah Yeah, yeah. So some people they have really hard to know. So uh, I see the problem not so much in the women's empowerment, but in the men's empowerment to go into the realm of women's work. So I mean in the sense that men need to change their mind towards the families will be probably more difficult then inspire women to take over and learn and be empowered. And I wouldn't want them to finish up, as it happened also here, that the women had to do double work, the work outside for the business and the work at home, because the husbands and partners didn't want to collaborate. It's better now in our uh, Western world, no, much better, but it took time. And I guess it will take time in Africa, at least the same time, if not longer. It will take take time and some hard work, especially with these principles that men should contribute financially and see it and don't touch the children and don't contribute anything else. It will be hard work. That's really hard work. And are you planning to do that more too and not only focus on women? Um, I'm really focusing on women empowerment, but I was thinking of working with some other men because we have to admit men won't listen to women as they will listen to men. So I was thinking of working with other men who were interested in this, but I haven't really been successful, but I'm also, yeah, I'm working towards that. It will take some time, but you are on a good way. And it's so great that you are doing this work. Wonderful. (laughs) Thank you very much. And I'm very glad that you talked with me. And I wonder, is there anything left which you want to to say still, which is important for the listeners, for the watchers to know? Is there anything? Mm. Something I would like listeners to know is that when this masculine world has, as you see, has really um, been very high, it has caused imbalance. And with this imbalance, we have to admit that it not only comes with, we are only talking with, talking about um, women who have um, married. There is also women who are not married and this imbalance really affects them in their relationships affects them in their work life. So um, it would really be good to women who are listening to embrace their, their women energy because it's really good, it's liberating. Yes, the masculine energy is also good, but let out that women energy to, yeah, it's really good that someone does. And men out there who are listening, either married or not, we have to really understand that it's equal work. <laughs> you have to make, it's a partner. So you have to really share the contribution, share the responsibilities. Yeah. Yes, and we women will ask it from you. There were hundreds of years where we didn't ask the men to share our family work. No, But now it's time everywhere in the world where we women stand up and say no. No longer like this. Patriarchy has to end in this way. You, we have to come to a partnership and not to one is up and one is down. That's the end. And I'm so glad that in your young age, 
you are doing that and you I wish you all the success and and good work and that you reach many 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 women and can help many 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 women so thank you thank very you. much <laughs> bye bye